Back yes, to I think it's dangerous being staunch in your opinion. Mm. You know what I mean? Let's say Gallop and Champ is your favourite horse, but he's got beaten punch down now twice. He, you don't have to defend him like he's your young, younger brother. Do you know what I mean? In a fight, he just. Uh, <laughs> what did you say about uh, Gallop? <laughs> yeah, exactly. People do get emotive. Oh about yeah, it. yeah. And uh, I told you that Galloping was no good. Oh, wait, you see him in March, and it's, you know. <laughs> but um, I, I think you're better off not to be staunch and just to be, and changing your mind is absolutely no problem. Yeah, of course, you're, you're accused of flip-flopping straight away, which we came up with a phrase on the Did final forum to get away with that, which is new evidence. But on the basis of new evidence is a great saying, because the yeah. truth is, if you're just, conv- if you convince yourself that Galloping de Champ cannot be beaten, uh, forget about the weekend. Don't worry about it. Oh, what are you worried about? It's a uh, that's that's the wrong distance for him. Willie's he horses are getting beat. He was only beaten two lengths. Yeah, he's got a big day in mind. Look, he won that race last year, and uh, very easily and very impressively. Very impressively. That was where Fastest he, Slow was actually night catcher in the race last year on his first start over fences since he won uh, a chase in France at the age of three, which I love. Why? Because I just think that horses should be running it three, four, and five. Like, Album Photo ran in France at the age of three, and he's still going very, very well at the age of ten. I just don't see why Irish horses, or I'm not saying Irish horses, but horses particularly outside France, we'll say, which is the rest of the world, that uh, they have to be, oh, he's a big backward type. You can't run him till he's six. Not every horse in France is small. Do you know what I mean? But they run at three and four. Yeah. So I just love the fact that fast or slow is only seven, but he's, he he won a chase at the age of three. I think it's brilliant. Well, that made him very difficult for Martin Brazel to place. It did. And then he went, uh, he went John Dorkin. He went two miler at Leopardstown. Then he went for the Ultima. Then on to Improved for the application of cash. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite enough to be correct. <laughs> no, <Robert>. no, no. <laughs> um, I actually backed him that way, that day, yeah. I was on Mumbeg Genius, to be honest. Yeah, ran a cracker. And uh, then he went... Uh, onto Punchstown, so he's and and Punchstown again. So he's only had the five spins for Martin over fences, including plus the one in France. So he's had six runs, but he's only seven. Well, he's an interesting one to to expand on the conversation because there's a number of high profile pundits I heard doing various different podcasts in the build up to the new jump season, and a lot of them. And I'm not having a go, by the way. Everyone's entitled to their own opinion, um, but a lot of them were just dismissive of that performance, and the the perception from some was. Uh, that's just a really good piece of targeting for Martin Brazel. He's taken on two horses who've had a hard race in the Gold Cup. Uh, they'll be better than him next year. And then along comes the John Durkin, and that copium gets into people's mindset, and the copium then becomes really strong because then people are, are then reaching for any excuse they can find. Is that, oh, well, that's why Gallopin was beaten. It's the first run of the season. Don't worry about it. Faster Slow was outpaced quite badly. I thought, rounding the final turn uh, in the Punchestown Gold Cup, and then comes back on the bridle for JJ and goes and stays on and and wins very convincingly. I thought he was going to be vulnerable in the John Durkin. The fact that he was able to win that race in the manner that he did, when he was quite weak in the betting, uh, when his main target, at least for now, is the Savills, and the fact that it would seem as though Gordon Elliott has looked at the King George market, looked at the Savills entries and gone... King George might be easier. Do I want to take on an improving young French horse or do I want to take on a French horse that could be past his best? Let's let's go for a King George, thanks. So in the last few weeks, uh, various different friends in racing, one of them is Don McLean. I was chatting to Don just on the phone. Legend. We've played a bit of five-a-side soccer with each other years ago, so I get on very well with Don. And um, we both had the same opinion about the race in Punchestown at the back end of April, that it was very, very unlikely that Braveman's game... Gallop and Champ and Envoy Allen back and forth had all run completely under par. Yeah. So we thought it was a good run. So I came up with a, gunning, a cunning plan and I said so on my website that I expected fast or slow to maybe finish third or fourth on Sunday and then I was probably going to tip him up for the Gold Cup. Oh, <laughs> so no. <laughs> oh, no. I've actually, I've said that. So uh, my cunning plan was quite stupid in the end. Um, so that's backfired. Uh, he's now six to one. Um, so I was actually upset that he won hands on I didn't back him well um, I was a little bit upset look I'll, this is complete after timing and regular listeners to the show will know I am way more wrong than I'm right but in the Toad 10 to follow special I was saying if you really want to win that leave Gallop de Champ out okay and I was doing that because the vast majority of people are going to put him in and Jamie was saying that there was actually a quite a large percentage of people were leaving out Constitution Hill and I couldn't get my head around it. exactly so Constitution Hill has a much better chance of defending his champion hurdle ground oh, yeah. than Gallopon does in the Gold yeah, Cup, well, just because of how much... race is easier than exactly. a two-mile, two chase. Yeah. One race is, is clearly takes a lot out of a horse, and the and other... Also, you, you've done a lot of stats on the Gold Cup and all that stuff, but that it's very difficult to come back and 
win again, etc., and to run well in the Gold Cup even. Well, in the 99-year history, this is the stat that blew my mind. In the 99-year history of the race, there's only been eight multiple winners. Really? Yeah. And somebody told me the other day, Ryan McHugh told me that uh, in the last 15 years there's been 13 Gold Cup winners. They've ran 99 times since, and out of the 99 runs, they only won 23 times out of the 99. So, And as I said to him, I think that's roughly 23.1%. Here's one for you for percentage stats. Uh, since 2000, since the beginning of the millennium, 46 individual horses have finished in the first three in the Gold Cup. Only 18 of them went on to win another grade one and only eight of them won multiple grade ones. Yeah. Look, it's a tough race. Uh, you have to be exceptional and you also can't have too many runs between in between each Gold Cup. I'd say one or two is probably the, the sweet spot as you saw with Al Boom Fold when you saw with Best Mate, etc. So, look at... Um, if if Gallop and Deschamps was blooming after Cheltenham, um, you know, sure, if we trained him, we would have ran him in Punchdown as well. You know, he oh looked yeah. invincible. And I should point out, Patrick Mullins was on the show yesterday and just was pretty dismissive of, of all this. Like He's very much of the opinion that he doesn't think it takes too much out of a horse. They were very pleased with Gallop and Deschamps going into the race. Desperately disappointed with him. He wasn't putting any positive spin on it. Mm-hmm. He wasn't reaching for the copium. And to be fair, it's the same for Paul Nichols. And I think both men, they're, they're great with the media. Both uh, both sets of connections are, are really good with the media. But Paul Nichols wasn't offering an excuse for Brave Man's Game defeat, and Willie Mullins wasn't offering an excuse for no. Gallop on the Champ. Now, I'm not telling... I'm, I'm a huge Gallop on the Champ fan. I'm vice president behind Lizzie Kelly of the Gallop on the Champ uh-huh. fan club um, and was super confident he would win the race last year. But that goes back to being entrenched in your views. I could very easily come on this show and just say, ah, don't worry about that. Don't worry about it, Gavin. Be fine. Don't complicate your mind. <laughs> he's of course he's going to win. He's the best staying chaser see, in Britain and Ireland. Yeah, if you like a horse, you're going to give him every excuse under the sun. Well, that's what I did for Don Poli. That's what I did for Jack Adam. You lose enough money, you have to learn your lesson <laughs> at some point. You let them away with stuff, and you think, ah, yeah, but this and yeah, but that. But you know, you have to be analytical. And the best time to look at a race is a couple of days later on your own when there's no emotions. The horse you backed got beat a short head. You're over that. Uh, so. You know, you can look at it properly. There is also a sinking feeling that if you did decide, if you are a big Gallop on Deschamps fan and you did take him on, maybe you did the same with Cotto Star and he came back and slapped you in the face 11 times. Yeah, but I mean, Gallop and have to go somewhat to get near a Cato Star now. Yeah. The more I looked into those stats, he really is the greatest thing chaser since Oracle. Uh, yeah, he is in the last 30 years, definitely. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> And you can amazing race. You can. I'm not saying Denman was bad. Denman was a terrific horse, and he was the best horse in that race on that day. But Cotto was an absolute machine. Yeah, yeah, sure. You know, Tingle Creeks and stuff. Sure, that's crazy. Yeah, phenomenal. Um, does faster slow appeal to you as a six to one shot for the goal? I, really, it's between four and five to one now. But you can get sixes apparently with yeah, a couple I of firms. Can. Um, he certainly has a good chance, as I said. Gallop in the Champ is only seven. He's only seven. Um, He's only had the six runs over fences, so he's still relatively unexposed. Uh, Jerry Kalam, uh, you know, if the ground came up soft on the day, he doesn't have to have soft ground. He's won over two and a half miles in in Sandown. He obviously won over short around that trip in Limerick, but that was that was very heavy ground that day. Um, he would love the three miles too. If the ground came up good to soft on the day, that'd be against him. But he's a brilliant horse. He could be undefeated if things went better for him in the Brown Advisory. Ugh. Um, will he go to the King George? Should it be fascinating? The King George isn't probably the strongest race in the world on paper. Brave man's game with the two defeats. Um, Shishkin due to go on the rehearsal chase this weekend. Uh, you can actually find you can find fault with every horse that's in the King George at the moment if you if you wanted to. That's going to be a small field race. Probably will, yeah. So we've got defending champion Brave man's game at eleven to four. Jerry Kalam after that sea of cash is now eleven to four. Joint second favorite. I asked Patrick about Alaho. Didn't rule it out. Didn't give you any confidence that they'll actually do it, though. You see, I like Alaho with the Ryanair. Obviously, stage star is a player. There's lots of players. Envoy Allen, even last year, uh, has a chance. Uh, Alaho's performance in Clonmel was brilliant in terms of he's back. He was off 18 months. It was good. His jumping was a little bit sticky in places, but even after the last, he showed a little bit of zest. That's fine. Now, that performance wouldn't win a Ryanair and wouldn't win a, um, a King George. But, you know... There's absolutely no reason why he can't improve tons for the run, do you know? Mm. Yeah, I, I would take that on board. I think the fact that they're not... Like, this time last year, it was all about the King George. They were absolutely determined to go for it, and then the spleen injury happens. Yeah, I've backed Isla over the Ryanair, so uh, I'd love if he skips 
the King George, and I'd love to see him go to the horse and jockey in January in uh, in Thurlis and then go to the Ryanair because you have two months between Clamell and Thurlis, two months between Thurlis and uh, Cheltenham. So that'd be ideal, but maybe he might go to... If if the horse is working brilliant, will he be tempted? It'll all be all down to if, if Aloha was given the same field he gave a couple of years ago. Yeah, it will also be down... To the field and what the level of strength and depth is in the race. I'd say will he be more, he'll make his decision more on how the horse is working rather than the opposition. And I'd say that would go for most of the Willie's thinking. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I Maybe it's other trainers would look at it and see. Maybe that's what happened with Paul Nichols. But it's not the strongest, uh, it's definitely not strongest no, King George, no way. Well, try and figure out who's going to run. Apparently, Lampresse is going to come back in the Tingle Creek. Okay. Uh, Venetia Williams will forget more about racing than I'll ever know, by the way. So if they want to do that, then fair enough. And I'll come back to John Bond in a second, actually, because there's an interesting talking point there, and you're very much in agreement with something Katie Young said recently. Uh, the real whacker? Yeah, I think he had a bit of an injury when he ran in the Paddy Power and ran poorly. But, yeah, I don't know whether he's going to show up in the King George. It depends uh, if he gets over that. He'd want to be working, you know, fast work very, very soon. You couldn't exactly be confident about him on the back of that run no, either. No, Although obviously no. on the Jerry Colomb form, um, Royal Pagai is twelve you to get one. The impression of the, the real wacker will never be Jerry Colomb again. Now, no, no. I, I think that was a magic ride from Sam Tristan Davis yeah. and a less than magic ride from Jordan Gainford. Yeah, that's probably fair. Yeah, um, people got stuck into Jordan Gainford quite heavily straight after the the Brown advisory because it, it let down a lot of multiples and stuff. So people were talking through their pocket, but. Yeah, he could have been more vigorous, perhaps a little bit earlier, but it did take him a long time to, to warm to the task. But yeah, as we said, it's unlikely he'll ever beat um, Jerry Colomb again, the real wacker. In his defence, did he just not have the tactical speed to make the move when he wanted to? The, the real wacker did have the tactical speed? No, the Jerry Colomb actually wasn't able to quicken when yeah, well Jordan wanted to. Yeah, that's what it looked like to me. Like he did get after him before they turned in. Uh, the thing is that on the, the Wednesday course, the old course, you turn in and there's a fence just there. You go a furlong, there's another fence. It's hard to gain momentum. It's hard to get into top stride for a horse that takes 100 yards to get into top stride. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You jump three out, you're on a bend, there's a fence. Uh, if that was like a haydock or somewhere, you know, he definitely would have won it, you know. There's also a significant difference between the old course and the new course. Yeah, and the, the new course where the Gold Cup is, yeah. The so new course is all about stamina. The old yeah. course is very much the speed old, oriented. The new course will definitely suit Jerry Kalaman in March. And it wouldn't suit the real whacker coming from the front. No, you just... You'd, you'd see the, the three miles too as a slight struggle and maybe could he end up in Ryanair, I'm not sure. I have a f- I have it in my head and we were just talking about this beforehand, don't become entrenched in your opinions and be fluid and yet I still have it in my head that, and I think Patrick Neville's a very talented trainer by the way, I'm not having a go at him by any means and again, another man who will forget more about racing than I'll ever know but I think he's become convinced he's a Cheltenham specialist and that's why they went for the Paddy Power Gold Cup so I would see him in the Cotswolds Chase yeah, next time possibly, out. Yeah, he was undefeated at Cheltenham before the Paddy Power. So and then the Ryanair. Frodo on route. Maybe. There'll be plenty of pace on in the Ryanair between uh, the Real Wacker, Alaho and Stage Star, that's for sure. Willing to be proved wrong, but that's what I would guess right now. Uh, GDC won't go. Gallopon won't go. Uh, Paul Nichols was on Nick Luck's show yesterday. Very interesting response to the question, is Brave Man's Game still your number one for the King George? He hesitated. And I can't work out whether he was hesitating before, because again, Paul, brilliant with the media. I can't work out whether he was hesitating before deciding whether to say, yeah, Pictori's not going to go for the King George. Or was he hesitating because I think he's not going to go, he might go, and if he does, he would be ahead of Brave Man's game. I don't know. Um, you'd be very disappointed if Pictori was good enough to win a King George, wouldn't you? Frodon was. Yeah. Maybe it's a weak renewal. It will also depend if Aloha and Jerry Kalam come over. If they don't, well then it's very much wide open to a a decent horse, but a horse that you wouldn't have thought was good enough at the time. Yeah. I'm like Edward Stone stepping up. <laughs> yeah. Would he stay three miles? I don't know. If he gets around in the Peterborough and gives Pictoria a fright, like if he gets beaten by Pictoria, that's game over. Because mm. you can't win a King George if you're beaten by Pictoria in a Peterborough. Um, but if he wins the Peterborough, <laughs> then suddenly 33 to 1. There's a few shooties around at 50s, Protector at. Uh, I think he's another one who's had. Hard races ah, yeah. in the Gold Cup. Yeah, he a lovely horse for the Shark. Uh, sure, maybe they'd be over for the crack. I don't know. He's a very nice horse in his day, but I can't see him winning the King George. Frodon won't run. Midnight River goes this weekend. My Drogo, good luck, lads. Um, and Shambl- this is going to be a 
seven runner race. Yeah, I'd say you're right. Yeah, it, it won't be uh, it won't be a big field, that's for sure. So suddenly, that eleven to four about Jerry Colomb looks okay. <laughs> yeah, you just want to get uh, an inkling from somebody that uh, the boat has booked. Yeah. Confirmation does need to come through, although it was very useful having Katie say, imagines going for the Cota Star Novice Chase, which I think is very interesting. Yeah, interesting. Is he going to stay three miles? I don't know. I am always reluctant to back, not always, but sometimes I do it, but it's certainly a negative for me when you see a horse running first time over a distance. I think, you know, there's been so many Guineas winners that don't stay the mile and a half in the Derby, even though you think that they will. So yeah, that's a great you just have to be careful that no, if you don't stay, you don't win. The one, that, another thing I'll say about uh, Jerry Kalam is that, for me, Jack Kennedy at the moment is riding absolutely brilliantly. He's a massive part of Gordon's success at the moment. If you look at the weekend, his victory on Imagine that we just mentioned, and also if you watched, I looked at me replays there today and yesterday. Uh, his performance on the two handicappers can't remember the names this minute, but the the two mile handicap hurdle and the three mile handicap hurdle are Saturday and Sunday. He was absolutely brilliant I think he's riding the closest right now this is I think he's riding the closest in terms of brilliance that I've seen since Ruby retired um, Paul Town is brilliant Harry Coblin is brilliant etc but just this minute please God I don't want to put the mockers on him because I love Jack Kennedy um, I hope that you know the injuries don't Oof. he's played with injuries and he has been but ever since he rode I think his first race in the flat was in Clamel in a two mile a handicap ever since that day I went geez this lad is something else but at the moment he's riding amazing he's phenomenal I remember his first ride at Cheltenham it was in the Martin Pipe and they were just backing the horse as though defeat was out of the question just not but so just much on the horse's form yeah. just Jack Kennedy yeah but like we were chatting earlier at lunch and uh, his ride in Black Tears to beat Concertista was very expensive for plenty of us and <coughs> but there's very few jockeys ever could have won in Black Tears that day he was exceptional yeah Unfortunately, it, it was a magnificent ride, but it did cost a lot of us a lot of money. Thanks a bunch for that, Jack. Um, but he's, he is mustard. So it'd be interesting if he goes over for the King George, or would he stay in Leopardstown for five or six rides? I presume he'd go over. Oh, he'd go over. Yeah. This isn't a Harry Cobden no. situation. <laughs> <laughs> this is not. A you don't. Uh, you don't want to piss off Jack after Harry being annoyed. Yeah, well, that whole thing was uh, actually in hindsight. Ah, yeah, it worked out. But I mean, it it did work out. But I think the tip was. There's a reason Harry Cobden's not going to hate Dr. Brave Man's game. Yeah. Uh, God knows what the, the full reason is, whether it was owners, etc. But sure. I would have. So uh, I have a theory about Brave Man's game. Um, I'd be very it's keen. It's the Brave Man's game show. Uh, yeah, it, it is. And again, big fan of the horse. I put him up for the Gold Cup last year at 33-1. to 1, And Paul Ferguson was looking at me funny going, have you lost your mind? And yes, many years ago. But we, we got close with him. It was two bets in the Gold Cup. GDC to win, Brave Man's game each way. Ideal. Well done. Easy game. Everything else at Cheltenham was an absolute disaster. But let's just ignore it. Easy game uh, didn't run the Gold Cup. Oh, man, I love that <laughs> horse. I love that horse. I'm sure they named him just because of the uh, the easy game shouts. But uh, Brave Man's game, if you watch him back in the King George, the Gold Cup, and the Punchestown Gold Cup, Harry's very animated on him from the third last to the finish line. He wasn't on his comeback, and Daryl wasn't either, because now he's traveling really well. And I wonder if the reason he's traveling so well is because his demeanor has totally changed from the Gold Cup, that it's kind of broken him. And that the finish, there, there is a perception from some out there, Andrew Halligan, mutual friend of ours, uh, is very much of the view that Brave Man's game has always been a bridal horse. I, with respect, Andrew, don't agree with that at all. But I Sometimes do I think yes, and some days I think no. Like last year in the King George, he wasn't a bridal horse. He came off a of turning in and he stayed on really well. So if a horse can do that once, even though they might flatter to deceive once or twice, somewhere else you still give him the benefit of the doubt I think but when you see a horse suddenly like an older horse suddenly start changing how they travel in a race and they're also being beaten that's three now three defeats in a row for Brave Man's Game you can make excuses for Punchestown you can make excuses for all three mm -hmm. but it's hard not to look at the historical evidence of the subsequent performances of horses who finished first, second or third in the Gold Cup and then apply that to Brave Man's Game and not think something's not right there Look, at maybe that's as good as he is. You know, he got beaten at Ballymore. Bob Bollinger put him in his place and things fell apart for Bob Bollinger subsequently. But for to have won a King George last year, um, he's just not quite top, top class, but he's certainly a grade one horse, yeah? Yeah, he's a grade one horse, 
trained by a genius who absolutely loves the King George, although I would say the last time he had a King George winner who ran in the Betfair chase, it was Clandis Obo, mm. and he was beaten in that King George. Yeah. Look, at the two runs for me is definitely a negative. Uh, the original plan must have been one run, um, and he was kind of leaning towards the Betfair chase, and then he ran the Charlie Hall, and then went in the Betfair afterwards. So two runs on soft ground and get beaten and having two tough races isn't ideal. If he does come back to win the King George, it'll be a brilliant performance from the horse and the trainer. So when we look at an anti-post market and you see a dominant favourite in Gallop on Champ and a strong second favourite now in Jerry Kalam with a strong third favourite, you're almost hardwired to go, right, well, one of those three are going to win it. There's no value elsewhere. Yeah, but we've thought that plenty of times. Like, um, there was one year in the champion hurdle, there was three two-to-one shots. I can't remember, but Esper Dallin goes and beats them all. Uh, there was three two-to-ones then the following year. Bouvedere and Lorena, wasn't it? Yeah, and there was another one. can't remember. Was it Apple Jade or... Oh, it was. There you go. That was the year Michael O'Leary kept saying, no, we're going for the mayor's hurdle, and Matt Chapman basically bullied him into... <laughs> a, which Matt was right, by the way. <laughs> she should have been in the champion hurdle, but... And then the following year, there was three two-to-one shots in the in the champion chase. Uh, one got injured. Uh, one... A stone bruise in the morning. Yeah, and therefore... Um, was a deputy saw you yeah. off two to five, and he got beat. So I'm just saying to you, you might think there's only three that can win it, but like you know, if the ground came up very soft in the day, horses like gentlemen's game and stuff, you never know. You never know. I wonder if it's a Lord Windermere, Coney Gree type year where something wild. <laughs> I'm going to say a horse like Norton's coin won it at hundred to one. You I, never know. I'm I'm going to say a horse, and I'm you prepared. To, go on. I'm prepared to be completely laughed out of your lovely home. By the way, kids, turns out gambling does pay. Beautiful place. Um, Flooring Porter, something like 66 to 1 for the Gold Cup. Now, he needs to go left handed. He's yeah, almost certainly going to go for a novice chase. I'm not putting him up. But if you wanted to go and take a swing at something at a really and wild I, price. No chance to run the Gold Cup. Not a hope in hell? I wouldn't think so. Oh, okay. He's only eight. Uh, it's not like it's his last chance. Um, I'd be. Maybe he's mm-hmm. eight, turn nine, obviously. Yeah. But I'd be amazed if he ran the Gold Cup, like, especially after what you saw at the weekend. Now, I thought. He did his chances for a Brown advisory, no harm at all at the weekend. It was actually an excellent run. At one stage, uh, Keith has his right hand on the right hand rein, and the left hand is he might be scratching his ear because he's trying to keep him straight. Uh, he had the loose horse; he was been dragged left. Uh, Keith was he was hanging, he was jumping left, etc. So, uh, I think one or two bookies pushed him out to twenties for the Brown advisory. I think that's a, an overreaction. Um, he he definitely has an each way squeak in a brown advisory, but I'd be amazed if he goes in a gold cup. Ah, he won't, he won't, he won't. No, I think he's something like sixty six to one for it. Yeah, no, 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 no. But then again, Gav- the thing about the gold cup is that it's three miles two and a small bit. Is that it's a mental distance, so that that's why it gives the outsiders a bit of a chance that if they're a, a dour stair and the ground was soft, etc. But you know, it's not a three mile grade one chase, is it? It's three miles two up a hill, so. That's why you, you can get the odd cool ground and the odd result like that. Yeah, and that's why the people who've put up Corey Grambler, I would agree with. I think they're right. But I I haven't backed him, and I don't think I will. I can see him doing a hedge hunter, being second to... Hedge hunter was second to War of Attrition. I can see him doing that, plugging on for second or third. I can't see him winning the race, though. Yeah, I couldn't either. Um, I think that Saturday's form, the Betfair chase, is not hectic. Uh, Royal Pagai, I wouldn't back him to win a Gold Cup, never mind. The horse that was a long way behind him in third, so... Yeah, uh, well done to Rich Ritchie and the team, but if Royal Pagai is winning a bit ah, for a chase. Absolutely, yeah, low, lovely horse. He's now three from four at Haydock, so good on him. He's also been battered in three Gold Cups. So hey, anyway, anyway, anyway but that King George is now so weak, he actually might be appealing at 12 to 1. <laughs> You're going to back four horses in a minute. No, I, I <laughs> have not had a bet, and I'm I'm really annoyed at myself that I didn't read that because I would have backed Jerry Colomb straight away. Ah, you'll get over it. Oh, no, you can't. can't. <laughs> the value's gone. It, it haunts you. 